This is Scott Vanderplu, and you're listening to the Artist Edition Index Podcast, Episode 75. I went down to the St. James Infirmary, found my baby there, stretched out on a long white table, so sweet, so cold, so fast. Thank you for joining me once more where we take the written word from aeindex.org and bring it to audio. <clears throat> I want to say, you know, I normally say bring it to life, but <clears throat> I'm recording it in the morning and I'm not sure how much life I can muster, so, but we're definitely bringing it to audio. For everything we discuss <clears throat> today, you can go read about it at aeindex.org. All right, it was a pretty full month in February. I got to manage to get a lot of stuff done, including two reviews by, I really squeezed it in. But uh, also we had a couple articles, a poll, so let's get right to it. Big news of February 1st at least was the releasing of the A, blah, releasing of the Dunbeer Awards results. 2022 Dunbeer Awards wrapped up January 31st at midnight. So on February 1st we had the winners and the, it was a landslide. Uh, Dave Stevens, The Rocketeer Artist Edition, won every category, including Design by Randall Dalk and Best Publisher, IDW, edited by Scott Dunbeer. So a very clean sweep for Scott Dunbeer, Randall Dalk, and IDW. Uh, As I say every year, I've got to work on getting the word out and get more people voting. This year, uh, a Rocketeer group got out there and voted, which was wonderful. Uh, And uh, P. Craig Russell, Wayne on Herald, their newsletter got people out and voting, which is wonderful. But uh, I sent some, I sent a a press release to The Beat and Bleeding Cool and didn't get any mention from it. So I've got to, I'm going to have to try that a little bit earlier next year and maybe a follow-up, see what I can do to get more eyes on it. But uh, that's a wonderful I think that's a couple years now that IDW and Scott Denver have had a clean sweep in the awards. So I was really, uh, I, I voted for uh, uh, a couple different things. I don't actually vote. That's, I should correct that. I don't vote in the voting, but I would have voted. <laughs> I would have given uh, 2000 AD a nod in endless years for the great work they're doing. All right. That was that. Then I did an article, IDW's Artist Edition Numbering, and this is an update really. Uh, I've, this is the third time I've done this. I think it was 2018 or 2020. And then someone emailed me and I um, started to correspond back and forth with them about it and decided that uh, Emmanuel M decided that it needed some updates because I had made a mistake. I had said there was no 55 and there was a 55. So that was disappointing. So I ran the update again. So you can check it out. This time it's in a sortable table. And instead of uh, the the first four books say first, second, third, fourth, I changed that to just one, two, three, four. And I've actually got in the chart again, I've got them in the release in the order of release date. So when you look at the numbers, you'll see one, two, four, three. And then, then it starts at 19 and then there's no 20. And then later on again, you get 18 and... You'll see what I mean. Pop on, take a look. Uh, anomalies. Uh, the second print of the Rocketeer doesn't get a number because it's a it's a reprint, which makes sense. And then we discuss what's missing. 20, 31, and 60 are still missing. So we don't really know. Uh, as previously, my hypothesis was that 31 was Strength of Volume 2. Um, 60 could be Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck Volume 2. Two and then twenty, no idea. And then uh, I've included the artifact editions one to twelve in their own chart, and they are completed. There's there will be no more artifact editions, so and they all actually all fall in order beautifully. So I had a note from Scott Dumbier about this and discussions about moving forward with the numbering and whether it's needed and such. We had some back and forths. So I don't want to really say. <coughs> Uh, a final outcome because there isn't one <clears throat> that I know of, but uh, yeah, we may see some changes on that front. All right, <clears throat> then we had the poll, which I was a day late on. 
I'd moved the pole from the 15th to the 16th previously, but this time we had uh, the pole. I forgot, and it posted on the 17th. But it's it's a continuation of the December pole, and that is design uh, uh, with while the bulk of every AE format book is scans of original art. There is the opportunity to make those limited pages of other eye ca- material eye-catching, immersive, engaging of this group who does it best. This is a continuation of our December 2022 poll. So this time around, I put uh, Serban Krasescu for IDW, Kerry mm, Grazini for Dark Horse, Sam Gretton for 2000 AD, Keely McCarthy, McCarthy, um, apologies, for Fanny Graphics, and P. Craig Russell, Wayne Allen Herald. Um, I voted for Keely. <clears throat> because I thought the work on Hal Foster's Prince Viant was just stunning. There was just so much design and work done to it that it was really, really nice. Uh, Pickery Russell, Wayne Allen Herald, took the vote this time, 29 votes, followed by Keeley with 15, and then Sam Gretton with 8. Sam Gretton did Judge Dredd by Brian Boland, Apex Edition, and the Zenith Phase 1 Apex Edition. Five votes for Serban Krasescu. <clears throat> He's done a bunch of stuff for IDW. I included Star Wars Artifact Edition and Al Williamson's Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back Artist Edition as examples. And then Carrie Grazini got the, uh, came in last place. <clears throat> Usagi Jimbo Samurai and Other Stories Gallery Edition. And the uh, Usagi Jimbo The Artist and Other Stories Gallery Edition. So it's an interesting <clears throat> poll. And it seemed that uh, people were quite galvanized. Uh, they, people came in and really wanted P. Craig Russell or Keeley. All right. Those are those results. Now I should mention uh, shipping changes. Let's have a look. Got a couple chip. No, we just got one shipping change. Well, we should have two shipping changes actually. Excuse me. <coughs> Bit of a cough this morning. Um, for one, uh, for a while I had the uh, best of Amparella back on the chart because I thought there was movement. Someone had emailed me, but then it's. It does. It it moved. It moved. It moved. It moved again, and then it was. It's back to May. So it's for some reason it's a date dynamite just keeps moving. Everybody else has just accepted that it's canceled. I think I'm just going to accept that it's canceled again and not worry about it. But movement we did see was Will Eisner's The Best of the Spirit Artisan Edition that moved to May 9th um, from Penguin Random House May 10th for Diamond Disturbing, depending on where you get your books. So that's that's the only change for this month. Everything else still scheduled. A small list, nothing solicited this month. So no new books announced. <clears throat> We've still got Frank Miller's Daredevil Artist Edition as the newest announcement coming out in August 15th. And that's, like I said, I found that on Penguin, but that hasn't been mentioned elsewhere. All right, that's the changes. Not a lot going on there. <clears throat> Let's talk out of print sales, which are really, they were a bit all over the place this month or technically January for February. All right. Bernie writes an artifact edition, second print sold four copies for an average of one fifty ninety nine. I don't know who in California has got this many copies, but they just keep selling them. So that's interesting. Best of EC artist edition, volume two, two copies sold for two twenty nine ninety nine average one copy of Bilson Kevich's mutants and moon and assassins for six forty nine ninety nine. My goodness. If only I could get my hands on five of those. All right, one copy of Conan Red Nails Original Art Archives. I'm sorry, three copies, averaging 190. Four copies of Dave Cockrum's X Men Artifact Edition, averaging 113.49. One copy of Dave Stevens' Rocketeer Artist Edition, second print, sold for 110. Two copies of David Mazzucchelli's Daredevil Born Again Artist Edition, sold for an average of 246.75. One copy of Frank Miller's Sin City: The Hard Goodbye, sold for 95. Three copies of Gene Cohn's Tomb of Dracula Artist Edition sold for an average of 263.33. Two copies of Gil Kane's Amazing Spider-Man sold for an average of 132.75. Two copies of Jack Kirby Commandy, The Last Boy on Earth sold for an average of 105.50. One copy of Jack Kirby's Fantastic Four The World's Greatest Artist Edition, that's the twice up one, sold for 174.99. Three copies of Jack Kirby's Marvel Heroes and Monsters sold for an average of 221.83. One copy of Jack Kirby's The Mighty Thor Artist Edition sold for $149.99. Two copies of Joe Kubert's Tarzan of the Apes sold for an average of $97.99. It's a great book. One copy of John Buscema's Silver Surfer sold for $100. One copy of John Byrne's Fantastic Four sold for $205.93. It's a bit of a price dip for that book. Three copies of John Byrne's Marvel Classics sold for an average of $91.29. That's a good price for that book as well. 
Two copies of Mad Artist Edition sold for an average of two thirty six twenty three. <clears throat> I had two copies for sale for months and months and months on my site, and I, I think I eventually lowered the price to one fifty because I couldn't sell them. <laughs> All right, one copy of Marvel Covers Artist Edition first print ninety nine ninety nine. One copy of Michael Golden's Micronauts Artist Edition sold for five oh five forty seven. That's the standard cover, folks. That's a big jump. Two copies of Mike Mignola's Hellboy and Helena: The Stories first print sold for an average of two thirty seven fifty. It's a book that just keeps doing things. I don't know. I think it's dead. I think the second print's out. The Artisan Edition is out. And then some increased prices surprise me. Three copies of Ross Andrews' The Amazing Spider-Man sold for an average of one thirty four ninety nine. Two copies of Sam Keeps the Max sold for an average of two sixty two fifty. One copy of Sergio Aragona's Grew the Wanderer sold for one eighty seven twenty one. One copy of Spawn Vault Edition four hundred. One copy of Spawn Vault Edition two for two hundred six twenty seven. One copy of Star Wars Artifact Edition for eighty nine ninety nine. Three copies of Stranko Nick Fury Agent of Shield first print sold for an average of two fifty three thirty three. One copy of the Prisoner original art edition sold for two twenty five. Man, the Prisoner book had just nothing; just sat there, didn't do anything. And then the last year and a half, people have I guess it's all Prisoner fans. I don't know, but that price just stays pretty high. Two copies of Wally Woods EC Stories Artist Edition first print sold for an average of three eleven. 50. One copy of Walter Simonson Star Wars Artist Edition sold for one twenty nine ninety nine. One copy of Walter Simonson Manhunter and Other Stories sold for seventy nine ninety nine. Two copies of Will Eisner's The Spirit sold for an average of two hundred. Record breaker, record hitters this month. Bill Sikavich's Mutants and Knights and Assassins. One copy in January sold for six forty nine ninety nine. That's a new high. Jack Davis's EC Stories Artist Edition signed. That hit a new high in January 16th of six ninety nine ninety nine. Mad Artist Edition, January 23rd, hit a new high of three ninety nine ninety nine. Again, that's my sour grapes. One copy. Of, and then Michael Golden's Micronauts, new high, 505.47. So one, two, three, four record setters this in January of 2023 for Artist Editions. And, you know, as I used to say, it was I started this, uh, the high price for the variants and the uh, the signed editions, but uh, just the regular covers seem to be hitting new records. So it's pretty great. Unless you're, you know, well, it's pretty great if you're selling. Let me put it that way. Which brings me to my, you know, weekly, uh, sorry, my monthly pitch for the site. Uh, if you'd like to support the AE Index, there's three ways, and I'm thankful for all of them. The first one is to use the links on the site. Generally, they are affiliate links. Not always. A bunch of the French sites are, are not affiliate links because they just aren't available. But I still like to it anyways. But in general, a lot of the links on my site, especially the eBay ones, really help out. Uh, you can be a Patreon patron. You can be a dollar or your local currency in general or more, whatever you'd like to support the site. And the third way is to buy something from the store. So... Uh, I have some new things on the store for those interested. I mentioned it last month, and I noticed the store had some increased. I posted three hard-to-get books. David Mazzucchelli's Do Ever Born Again. Wally Woods EC Stories Artist Edition Second Printing, which is getting very hard to get. And Will Eisner's The Spirit Artist Edition. So I put those three out of the site. They are current pricing, market pricing, um, you know, higher than... Uh, cover price that's for sure but they were hard to get i had to do some negotiating so i was glad to add them to the site anyway three ways to support the site and it's greatly appreciated and you may be wondering what does he do with that i just buy more books that's what i do with it they host the website buy books all right two reviews this month uh both uh bandis and a and uh the first one is uh, johan et puis uh, La Guerre de la Seven, mm, I'm sorry, Set Fontaine, Artiste Edition. Let me give you the uh, the blurb here. Johan Pirlui, 10th album, La Guerre de la Sept Fontaine, is a key album in Peyo's career. Yes, every time I get to seven, I'm counting in French on my fingers. Uh, firstly, because it constitutes the pinnacle of his artistic production, one of those magical moments when Franco-Belgian comics are at their peak. Then, because it is precisely during the publication of this album that the Smurfs, who make their second appearance there, will leave the status of secondary characters to become the center of gravity of the universe of Peo. 
a unique moment in the career of the Brussels designer. For the first time, the original boards of this founding album of the legend Peyo are reproduced in facsimile in the original format. This is from Dupuis. It was released in November 2022. Uh, it took me a while to get my copy, and then I sat on it in January, and then eventually got, I'm glad to review it this month. It's 335 millimeters by 470 millimeters. It's 80 pages, and it's hardcover. It is 199 euros. You can get it from Amazon if you if available. Otherwise, uh, Niffy M store is the uh, one I would order it from. That's where I, I, I did order it from. Like I said, they don't have an affiliate link, but great store. Um, good shipping prices for us North Americans. All right. I think in my review, I said this is the Smurfs' first appearance. Yeah. So I should correct that in the review because that blurb clearly says it's the second appearance. Um... It's a good book. I really, really like what Dupuy does. So they have a... This is the third volume in their Artiste Edition line. And uh, first off, the packaging is amazing. I know this is a weird place to start a review, but... Like, you get the, you get the book, and it, it comes in a shipping box like everything else. But then, when you take it out, it's it's got its... Uh, I guess Dupuy ships it in a mailer. And then inside the mailer, which is which has got nice corner protection... Then you pull out the cardboard case that is shrink wrapped, and then you open the shrink wrap in the cardboard case, and you have a book and a very well packed, well designed cardboard case. And the book is also shrink wrapped, and then you get to your book. So it's very, very well packaged. It will survive shipping anywhere in the world and come out pristine. Uh, if you look at my reviews, you'll see that there's a dent throughout my book, which is sort of annoying, but it happens. So I don't know where this dent came from, but you can see it clearly on the, there's one white page when the, when the book starts, uh, that they show the cover image. So, uh, Johanna Perdui, I don't think, uh, any of that is available in English. Uh, I know, uh, the Smurfs have all been available in English and then Paper Cuts is continuing to do the Smurf collections. Uh, a few years ago, I got a, some for my son when he was younger and he liked them. Uh, this, uh, Peo, I mean, I, I do really like his art. I, I had probably discussed a Peo catalog, uh, that I had. And, uh, this is, this is really good. Oh, yeah, uh, anyway, so, you can see I'm a bit scatterbrained this morning. Um, <clears throat> so the design is great. They always, they do an introduction and, uh, discussing the work, discussing the creator, uh, showing samples, uh, different things of the original art that maybe doesn't appear in the pages, supplementary things like uh, covers of the uh, the issues of Pilot or Spiru that it appeared in, and just generally good text. Now I have to sit there with my Google, uh, my phone and use Google Translate to do every paragraph, but it does work out. They do a really nice presentation, and then you get into the the book proper. The scans are wonderful. Uh, this book is so interesting. It's like like all the Spiro Pulip books, uh, right? The art was done in two sections, an A and a B section. And then for the albums, uh, they taped them together. So this has got the tape marks. You can see they're still labeled A and B. But for some reason, the bottom, the bottom of all the boards have aged or got dust on them or um, like mold spots or something. Uh, so it's some odd way that it was stored that the, like the, a lot of the bottom pages are much worse than the top. So I'm not sure what happened there, how it was stored. Uh, all that sort of stuff, if you want to refer to it as a patina, it all it all adds to the overall effect, right, of the original art. And this, this is one of the reasons uh, AE format readers, collectors, buyers, they're buying these books, right? We only want to see what it looked like in the artist's hands or what, what the original page looks like. Not the printed, cleaned up. Right? Um... Peo didn't make a lot of mistakes or didn't do a lot of corrections. He used whiteout very sparingly, or correction fluid, as I say in the review, because I don't want to use a name brand. But it's an ex- it's an excellent book. The uh, the only disappointment with it, and this is probably not fair to anybody really, or Dupuy or Peo, and for sure. But uh, I mean, it's eighty pages. The other books were more than that. It's also smaller than the other books. Uh, this is the smallest uh, artiste edition from Dupuy yet. That's probably because this is it's following the the size of the originals, but it's it's a bit disappointing when you compare them to the other ones because the prices stay the same, right? One hundred ninety nine euros. Something I didn't realize either is these are printed in China. I thought uh, the bulk of uh, Ben Nissanay 
books in this size and this format were printed in France, Belgium, but apparently not. So that was interesting as well. Uh, an excellent book as always. Check out the review. Check out the pictures. Watch the video flip through because <clears throat> I've got a video flip through for every review now for all those video hounds out there. <clears throat> all right. Second review. Photonique, Les Enfants de l'Apocalypse en Vigeant Original. Let me give the blurb here. Now, this is from Edition Black and White, <clears throat> and they don't really do a blurb on their website. They just give you the just the facts. So the plates of the album have been scanned and printed in four colors. The retouching and all the details that we lose when reducing or coloring will be visible. The original Ciro Tota issues, as you've never seen them before, a must. Containing the entirety of the 80 pages of Les Enfants de l'Apocalypse, Reproduced from original plates, printed at 153% of the original size. Printed in color and HUV technique for an astonishing rendering. I don't know what HUV technique is. Forward by Thierry Mornay. 40 page gallery, a fold out page, enlargements of panels to appreciate the power of the author's line. The book is protected in personalized cardboard packaging. Cardboard cover with a selective gloss varnish on certain parts of the book, plus anti scratch varnish on the cover. Printed on a beautiful superior Munkin paper, 170 grams. Sent in a shielded cardboard packaging. This was released in September 2021 by Edition Black and White. It's 30 by 40 centimeters or 12 inches by 15 and 3 quarter inches. 128 pages. It's a hardcover and it was 115 euros. You can order it online from Edition Black and White. I did not find an affiliate link for this book either that I could uh, do. So. Uh, so I previously did a, a different Edition Black and White Zero Toto book. Uh, this was part of a batch of books I bought from Edition Black and White. I had some, uh, my uh, PayPal um, uh, balance had been building up, uh, I want to say a year ago. And, uh, you know, the AE printing market for North America had really declined or slowed down. And uh, <clears throat> I decided to order five books from Edition Black and White. It was the best, I uh, got the best shipping deal I could get. And this was one of the five. Unfortunately, with all the events of the last year, I've been slow to review them. I don't think I reviewed any of those five yet, but they are coming. I'll tell you that. Uh, I really like Zero Toto. I think I've discussed that previously when I reviewed that uh, gallery book <clears throat> that I got. Uh, this is his uh, character Photonic, which is being printed in English as individual issues. If you check Previews World, you can see that uh, Photonic's getting some printings. They're not doing this story yet. But we so you should see this in English. Oh, let's just uh, this book. Very, you know, interesting. It is on black and white. He must be very. He must be uh, a fan of North American AE format books. And I'm talking about Raphael Wacker, the publisher of It Is on Black and White, because he very much follows the uh, the format of the really of the IDW books, where there's a there's an introduction or a preface in French. And uh, there's the colophon, and then there's the story, and then there's a the gallery section at the back. And he's got chapter dividers, so it very much follows sort of what the format established by IDW, which is great. Um, but uh, we miss out on any answer material, any biographical material that we've sort of come to expect from other French uh, books of this caliber. So, like I said, with the Dupuis Artiste edition, I was just discussing. Um, Scans are great in this. Uh, there's an, there is a note about, you know, if you if you stop and thought, what, what why is it 153%? So it says, uh, the original boards of Les Enfants d'Apocalypse are reproduced at 153% compared to their actual size. The original plates were cut at the printer for the most part, not always with the same attention to detail and with varying dimensions. This explains the visible white backgrounds. So I think he increased them. I, actually, I still, that really doesn't explain why they are increased. Why, uh, or just to get, uh, so you can appreciate the art more. I'm not, I'm not really sure, I guess. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the scans are great, though. They reproduce really well. The original art shines. Um, Toda did use Whiteout. He made these little notes in red. I don't know if it was for him or the publisher. And uh, some of them are crossed out. So I think it's production values. But I can't really tell. And uh, it's interesting. So we've got uh, we've got the full story. we got the preface, the full story. There's some unused pages that are reproduced there. Now, these aren't. Uh, the, the story is reproduced so it fills the page. These got, these extra unpublished pages don't fill the page. Uh, they're labeled as, uh, what is it? Uh, Les planches inédites, which apparently is unpublished. 
And then we've got the gallery section, the universe of Ciro Toda. And this is actually one of the reasons I wanted this book. Great gallery section because Ciro Toda did a lot of strange covers and different art for Marvel. And uh, there's some great stuff in here. Uh, he's got some other photonic pages, the cover. And then the fold-out that's mentioned is really good. It's a, it's a double-page spread of uh, photonic. And then on the other side is this... Uh, is this is a spirit um, piece that is really great, and that's actually I featured it in the review, so it's wonderful. And then he's got some other stuff, right? There's a team art in here. There's, like I said, the Marvel art. There's some really great stuff, some fantasy pieces. Uh, there's a yeah, I'm just it's a really nice gallery, and the the presentation, the packaging is is really good. It's a you know I, I, I it's a limited number of 450. Unfortunately. Uh, I didn't mention that Johan and a Poulet is also a limited edition, uh, so I missed out on that. That's a that's a limited edition of six hundred ninety nine. I had number two ten. Uh, Photonique is a limited edition of four fifty. I have number two fourteen. So it's printed in the book, and then it's handwritten on the cardboard cover. I have the full video flip through again. If you'd like to go on, check out the review. Uh, well worth it. Um, Again, I know these aren't for everybody, and but for people in North America or people in uh, Europe who appreciate uh, this, you may take a look at the review, take a look at all the pictures, see what you think of that, because I, th- I think it's a wonderful book. And, uh, yeah, interestingly, uh, Edition Black and White seems to have a st- sort of a standard size cardboard case. Now, it's a very solid case. Uh, it's probably one of the most rigid cases I've seen in a few years. But uh, not all the books fit exactly in the case. This book doesn't fit the case properly. There's a, there's two sort of uh, plastic spacers. And the one has tape that's not pulled, but it, it could be stuck in the book. And then the, the tape sort of curled a bit and stuck to my book. So I was slightly annoyed by that. But I kept the book so it shouldn't move. So Anyway, that's it for this month. Thanks for joining me. We will talk to you next month, and we'll have... Maybe we'll have some news on some upcoming things. And I'm going to try and discuss more about the numbering with Scott Dunbeer. Uh, so have yourself a great month. Let her go, let her go, God bless her. Wherever she may be, she can search this wide world over. She'll never find a sweet man like me.